Hello and welcome to Absolute Trust Talk. I am Kirsten Howe and I'm here with Madison Gunn, our Associate Attorney here at Absolute Trust Council. Today we are going to talk about estate planning involving pets, which is going to be a, a very fun topic. Um, Madison said to me on Monday, whoa, it was a great weekend for celebrity deaths. We had a few <laughs> <laughs> celebrity deaths over the weekend and you know we like to talk about that and we will a little bit at the end of this episode um, but first you have to have the the medicine and then you get the sugar um, <laughs> so Madison why don't you um, get us started yeah when we first started talking about this as a topic for the show um, you know the Queen Queen Elizabeth had passed away and it had been brought to our attention that she had stopped breeding her beloved corgis several years ago because she did not want to die and leave all these dogs, uh, you know, in the palace. And, you know, so that's what she stopped. I think she had had one dog left and, but that didn't stop her son, Prince Andrew from giving her a dog, uh, you know, at the end, towards the end of her life. Oh and yeah. And so he now has that dog. So he, it was a, that gift got given back so yeah, he could take he care of it. <laughs> But I mean, she had a lot more than just corgis. She bred horses and raised horses. And so one of the things to point out, and I know it's private because she was the queen, but it's likely that any horses that she owned that were not owned by the crown, but owned by Elizabeth, um, were given to her family through a will. And so these are things that come up for us routinely um, in estate planning and dealing with people's pets. And so we thought that would be a great thing to talk about. Yeah. And you know, estate planning for your pets is important for a number of reasons. I mean, the first one, of course, is that you you love your pets and you, just like a child, you worry about what's going to happen to them when you're gone. So you can plan for your pets. Um, I think one of the things that maybe people don't necessarily think about is how long some animals can live, right? Um, yeah. I mean, dogs are anywhere from eight to 16 years, although, you know, the longer, the rarer and, you know, the bigger the dog, the shorter the lifespan. Yeah. But the oldest dog on record is a 28 year old Australian cattle dog. So that's like a medium sized dog. And chihuahuas routinely live 12 to 20 years. I have two of those. So I might need to address that in my estate plan. <laughs> yeah. One, I think is going to live longer than all of us. And he's like, <laughs> so, I mean, he just keeps going. <laughs> um, you know, and then for you, you know, cats can live 12 to 18 years. Oldest cat on record is 28. Your cats are three, two, two. three. Yeah, yeah two. Yeah. yeah. But so, um, this, this conversation made me think about that because I haven't really actively done anything about my pets. I have two children, one of whom wouldn't be able to take my cats because he has a dog that we never let his dog near our cats. So, um, so I have to give that some thought what I would think would happen. I hope I survive my cats. But yeah, one please, you never know. Um, there's a, there's several other pets. Those are the most common, right? Dogs and cats. Right. That's the most common family pet, but there are other things to think about. Um, koi fish, 25 to 35 years. I mean, for a glorified goldfish, I thought that was very impressive. Oh. Just a fish. You know, um, cockatiels, which are, you know, some parrots that you can get at PetSmart 16 to 25 years. My mom had a cockatiel from before I was born that died well after I turned 21. So, I mean, they live quite a while in captivity. She has a parrots live up to 50 to 65 years. The bigger the parrot, typically the longer their lifespan, which is reverse of dogs. Uh, my mom just this week put down a parrot that she had for 27 years. So, I mean, yeah. and I, I highly doubt she's going to get another one, but if she does, we'll have to have that estate planning conversation. Yeah. That's, <laughs> you know. that's like the Queen Elizabeth thing, you know, do yeah. I'm, I'm this old. Should I really be getting another one of these pets at this point in my life? Yeah. Yeah. I was just impressed that I was like, I don't remember having that bird when I was that like, young, like yeah. They don't remember having it at that house. You know, it was just, I was like, really? 27 years? Like, that's <laughs> doesn't seem like it. Um, rabbits can live 7 to 10 years. Snakes, 9 to 40 years. Uh, 40? So, again, oh. they're the bigger the snake, the longer the lifespan. Oh. 
Mm. Yeah. Lizards, three to 20 years. Same thing, bigger, the longer. So like iguanas would live a lot longer. Yeah, yeah. One of the things I see commonly is turtles and tortoises um, can live 40 to 45 years. And like a tortoise lives longer than a turtle. So the tortoises live on land. Turtle lives in the water, typically. Um, you know, my husband I had those. Know. My husband had those growing up. They, uh, cause they lived in the desert. They were wild, but they would burrow in the yards and, and things like that. And, uh, they live a long time. I mean, you see those big tortoises at the zoo. Yeah. Yeah. yeah at the Oakland zoo. There's yeah, plenty of hundred year old tortoises. So I would imagine that that's a possibility. Yeah. Chickens, you know, that's been a huge thing since COVID, right? Oh, Everyone's wow. got chickens, um, eight to 10 years, you know, wow. and obviously the more care, you know, all of this is contingent upon regular vet care. <laughs> so I know like, you know, exotic pets, they don't typically go to the vet unless there's a problem. So that's right. That's common. It's not like right. with dogs and cats where they, they get their shots. Yeah. Yeah. And then out here, you know, it's kind of rural or um, ponies and horses, 25 to 33 years and ponies live longer. Uh, but in, you know, if they're not being ridden, they're just out to pasture, they have a good setup, they could live right. quite a while. Yeah. 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 And that's a big, I mean, if you think about leaving someone a horse, that's an expense. That's a big expense. Yeah. yeah. I think the, the horses are the, the big one where we have to have a really serious conversation about money because um, they are very expensive animals. Yeah. And if it's not going to family that's getting your house that has the stables and the land, I mean, then it's a, there's a whole slew of uh, right, expenses right, right. that have to be discussed. Okay. So planning for your pets is important. There are a variety of different ways that you can do that. Um, a couple of the common ones that we tend to use most often um I mean, the one that I use most often, I would say, is we designate someone to take our animals and we also leave a certain amount of money for that person if they will take the animals. And um, so oftentimes we'll say, you know, $5,000 per pet if you'll take my pets. Um, that's a common one and it's pretty easy to administer that for the trustee, I think. Yeah. And I mean, a lot of times it might be that, you know, it we either goes to an individual who's going to take care of the pet, or it could go to a rescue who will right. rehome or an individual who will rehome the pet for you. Right. Right. Okay. But um, oftentimes I think it's important to include that financial component um, yes. just to make sure that it happens that people are incentivized to do the help. And the other thing, <laughs> you know, if you're talking about an individual, you got to ask them ahead of time. Don't just assume that they would be happy to do that for you. you yeah. Ask them ahead of time. Yeah. Then the financial component is good because at least they're not saying no because they can't afford it, you know, yeah. particularly if it's something like a horse or something right. like that. Right. right. And it's important to, to think about that in terms of what the animal is going to be, you know, a cat, $5,000, maybe that's okay to take a 10 year old cat, but to take a five year old horse, you know, you're going to have to make it significantly more attractive, I think, financially. Um, yeah. One of the things we've done to combat that is letting it be the dollar amount be at the trustee's discretion, depending on what pets you have on the time of your death and what their Age. expected life expectancy yeah. is. Yeah. And their health too. Yes. You yeah. Know, you get a cat with kidney disease or diabetes. Right. That's a lot yeah. more than. The vet bills yeah. are going to be a lot more than yeah. other cats. Or um, or the dental bills in our, in both, both your and I's pet right. situations. <laughs> yeah. We each have a pet with not so great. <laughs> but we love them anyway. Yeah. Um, that, but you can also, um, you can also, rather than just giving your animal outright to somebody along with a pile of money, you can set up a pet trust. Um, and those are recognized by the state of California in the probate code. There's a the whole section about pet trusts. Um, so what, what would, a 
pet trust say? Yeah, typically it's similar to the situation where you're giving money and the pet to somebody, but it's being held in trust and managed by a trustee. The trustee may or may not be the person actually taking care of the pet. So it might pay for someone to take care of the pet. It might um, pay for housing for the pet. I mean, it depends on, you know, obviously how much money somebody has, but pretty much the sky's the limit in that regard. So if they want to set money aside, you have a professional trustee who's managing everything for that pet for their life. Yeah. And the, and the trust can say, and well, and should say, you know, once all of these animals that I'm leaving have passed away, whatever money's left in that trust, you're going to tell us where you want that to go. Yeah. Um, and that's, so that's kind of an advantage of having a pet trust as, a, as opposed to just handing a bunch of money to somebody um, is that only as much money as the pet actually needs will go out of the estate. Um, but then you have, you know, the hassle and the expense of administering a pet trust. You have yeah. a trustee who should be compensated and all that kind of thing. Yeah. So um, we don't, we don't see people setting up pet trusts quite as often, um, but I do think it's more common in a situation where it's a, an animal that's going to be very expensive. That's yeah. I scary. suspect that might be more common with like show dogs and paper dogs that, you know, they have a, you know, it, they have a, what do you want to call it? A, a value <laughs> more, more than like they have an actual financial value right. as opposed to just, you know, the cost it would be to take care of them, but they have the ability to earn their own income. To earn money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I, I'm sure that is true. We haven't had too many of those um, show dogs through our practice, but we have seen some. I've definitely seen rights to some frozen specimens yes. through our trusts. <laughs> right. That's right. Yeah. Not dogs. exactly a pet, but yeah a future possible pet. Yes. <laughs> and I imagine that would be the same for any animal that can earn money, like, you know, pets that are, or not pets, but animals that are in show business and, and things of that nature that they use in movies and TV. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, and those are technically pet. someone's pet. I mean, yeah. I suppose under the law, they are their personal property. And um, even if you're just using them to make money, uh, they technically are your pet, I guess. Um, okay, so are we um, ready to start talking about celebrity and oh. celebrity and their pet planning? Always. <laughs> um. <laughs> Madison's forte. She's I know well. very good at um, following following celebrities and what they get up to. <laughs> yeah, this one was fun because I didn't know about. A lot of them. I mean, I knew about one, obviously, and then some of them I just didn't even know about. So um, the very first one, which I didn't know about, uh, you told me, was Carl Lagerfeld. When he oh, died yeah. a few years ago, he has this cat, um, Choupette. Is that how you say it? It's, I'm sure uh -huh. it's French, so I don't know. Um, a Burmese cat um, in France that he left $1.5 million to. So we're not sure how he left the money to her. Um, in Germany, where he is from, you could actually leave money to your animal. In, oh. mo in most countries, including France, you cannot. So you have to leave it to someone to take care of the pet or to a pet trust or a charity. But you can't leave money. I mean, how is that pet going to deposit the them? Pet can't, like, you can't do that. Cash checks. Yeah. yeah. Can't, can't pay for food. Yeah. You yeah. have to leave it to a human. Yeah. That's but it's interesting that in Germany, you can Ah, I wonder. Uh, that doesn't it needs, seem a, needs a guardianship now. Yeah. Oh, the <laughs> guardianship. And so somebody has to go do a guardianship. <laughs> I imagine that's how that Maybe. would have to be. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I'm like, does the cat the does it file taxes? Does the animal <laughs> file taxes? You know, like what if you have? I mean, in this case, Chupet, she makes her own money too. She has her own income, so that has she to be was, reported on right. someone's tax return, right? Especially she in Europe. She was famous in her own right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. Especially in Europe. That's interesting. Okay. Well, okay. Yeah. And we all know, well, those of us of a certain age anyway, uh, <laughs> know about the the most famous, perhaps, um, pet bequest of all time, Leona Helmsley. Yeah. So she 
was a famous New York City land, I think landlord, right? Um, yeah, she, yes. Like a real estate magnate. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, she left $12 million to her dog, Trouble, a Maltese. Um, and she cut out her two grandchildren and left her dog $12 million. Um, So, of course, they sued, right? They got nothing to lose. Um, so that was litigation. So anytime you leave a significant amount of money to your pet and not your family, I'm sure that will ensue. People will be unhappy. Yeah. yeah. And they'll try. Um, yeah. And that the judge ruled that she was mentally unwell, unwell when she did her will. And so he, he didn't eliminate it. He just reduced just the it, gift yeah. to $2 million and then gave the grandchildren $6 million to split and then gave the rest to charity, which I'm, I think the majority of her, the bulk of her estate was going to, I mean, 12 million, she had billions. So I'm, this is not, Oh, well, yeah, you know, yeah. the 12 million is not her entire estate. That's just the gift. She left her dog. <laughs> so that was the easy part to attack by the, yeah, by the grandchildren. Um, well, that seems like a fairly fair result. I'm sure yeah. 2 million was enough for that dog. <laughs> Two million dollars. I hope so. Even even to cover a home in New York City. That's enough. Yeah, I know. <laughs> enough to send them to college and grad school. Yeah. Um, Should be a doctor Maltese. A doctor Maltese. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and another one that was fairly recent was uh, the fashion designer, also like Karl Lagerfeld, Alexander McQueen. Oh. He left about eighty-two thousand in U.S. dollars in trust for his pet dogs and then another 164,000 to some animal charities. Oh, so he, nice. he made sure that they were taken care of. 82,000 doesn't seem over the top. For no. Multiple dogs. Although sometimes with celebrities, I don't know what's liquid and what's not. So, I mean, the with Alexander McQueen, because he's a, a designer, I don't know how much his name image likeness future royalties, right. things like that versus what he had in the bank. So the bank. right. That that can be true. So the 82 could have been a big chunk of what he yeah. Liquid had what he had liquid to give away. Yeah. All that income versus assets <laughs> questions. Right. 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 Yeah. And and then the next one is so there's a couple of reported ones. I mean Oprah's not dead, but she has <laughs> reportedly set aside $30 million for her dog's care. So, I mean, that's, I think she's got like three or four or did like little poodle, poodle mixes of some sort. But oh, I mean, that's, that's a lot. That is a lot. That's like, I want to maintain until the end of their lives, three of my homes. Yeah. So that my dogs can fly around the world, you know, stay in Montecito stay in wherever else i don't maui. know maui yeah she for sure maui. yeah <laughs> That'd be i mean to each his own but she could have just given everybody a dog for that she could just be you get a dog and you get a dog and you get a dog and you get 10 million dollars <laughs> yes <laughs> yes and she has kids i mean she's got family that would take pets i'm sure so um another big one that was that's purported, right? Obviously she can change that. She's still alive. Um, oh. Was, and I don't, I'm going to assume I'm pronouncing this right, but I don't know. Majel Barrett Roddenberry. She was the wife of the creator of Star Trek. So oh, no. quite Gene a big Roddenberry. estate. Yeah. yeah. Um, she set up a $4 million trust fund for her dogs and a, and a million dollars set aside for a domestic employee to care for them. So that is like the pet trust we talked about. So she's covering, you know, a million dollars for however many years of salary that is, or an outright gift for a domestic employee to take care of them. So that's. Well, they'll have a nice life. That's. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sometimes they, it would be a little bit better if you could find out what kind of dogs they were or, you know, all that mm -hmm. detail. Like, are they real fancy? They need a lot of grooming. You know, some of those <laughs> dogs, I can't even imagine what the grooming bill would be. For those hmm. like a like a Pekingese or well, they have like to have that all the time, yeah, and yeah, and like a brush every day. And <laughs> yes, that is the new style. People get their dogs fur colored. Have you seen that? Oh. You'll see like a purple poodle or you know a blue Maltese, and it's like a it's like chalk, but it doesn't come off on your furniture. That's I what I'd be terrified about. But 
yeah, they do that all the time now. It's very different. Or paint their nails with like a some pet safe nail polish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I could see that. I could see that. But yeah. I'm not sure about coloring their fur. I don't know. <laughs> It's different. Um, and then the, the last one we have is Betty White reportedly set up a $5 million trust for her dog. So I presume that when they do that, it's so when the dog dies that they could leave the money to charity. In her money. case, probably yeah. that's what would happen. Have, have yeah. 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 Well, and she was very famously an animal lover and an animal yes. advocate. And so, um, that's yeah, we'll, ha we'll have to keep you posted when we hear about Bob Barker's estate. <laughs> Did he have a lot of pets? No, but he famously was like, you know, spay and neuter. Oh, that was that's his true. thing. Yeah. That's true. That'd so be... I imagine he would have left money to whatever, whatever his thing was, whether it be the SPCA or, yeah, you know, some charity. whoever well, sponsored that. And we might not ever find out, yeah. you know, if if everything goes as we would hope. It will be private. That's, yes. that's the goal in the state if plan. The, yeah. If the estate plans are set up right, we shouldn't know anything. We shouldn't know anything other than this person died. Um, okay. Well, let's uh, let's go to our questions. I didn't say at the top of the, uh, of the show that if you are watching live and you have questions, you can type them into the uh, comment section. Um, I think probably our viewers know that <laughs> by now but i doesn't hurt to remind them so i'm gonna skim back and look for questions make sure i don't miss any okay so um here's the question what happens to a pet if the trustee or executor can't find anyone to take it yeah that's a good question and it's up to your trustee or executor so it could be that they have to look for rescues, um, see if they can have it rehomed in, in that way, like drop it off at a rescue, that do that due diligence. Um, if there is no provision or you don't have an estate plan or they can't find anybody, I mean, the only option would be the pound, which of right. course is not not the ideal option. Yeah, and not all, not all pounds are no kill there. Right, and also it depends on what pet because... Some mm. pets get adopted out really quick out of the pound and some do not. Like small dogs go fast. If you have a pity, that's yeah. not going to be a good a lot option. Yeah. yeah. Or they say black cats are the last to be ad adopted. So if you have a black cat, that can be more difficult. And oh. I'm sure adult cats are, are different Harder, too. Yeah. I mean, everybody wants a puppy and a kitten, right? Sure. Except for except for me, because I'm like, just give me one already trained. One that's trained. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and if there isn't a written authorization for the trustee or executor to give money along with the animal, they can't do it. They just got to find someone who'll take the animal for free. So yeah. um, that's, that's an important point to consider. Um, okay. Yeah. All right. How, how can you make sure that the trustee of a pet trust is doing their job? Well, you could put that in the trust. I mean, I would hold them accountable in a regular trust that's leaving money to your children. The trustee has to provide accountings to those children. Obviously, having the trustee provide an accounting to your pet is not going to be helpful. That's not going to go anywhere. <laughs> right. But you can make sure that they have to provide an accounting to somebody. It can be whomever you choose uh, just to keep them honest in that regard. And you can... That's yeah. all. I mean, you could do that anytime, regardless of the type of trust, but you would right. want to certainly yeah. want to add somebody into a pet trust. Right. And the, I mean, that's always part of the special needs trust that we write for our clients is, you know, if we have a beneficiary who's not going to be um, able to read and understand their accounting, we need to have somebody else who will, you know, keep an eye on the trustee. Yeah. And, I mean, they just keep... changed the law for if, if you trust or becomes incapacitated, they have to provide the accounting to the subsequent beneficiaries because providing right. an accounting to an incapacitated beneficiary is moot. Same as checks checks and balance. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually the California statute allows, um, the pet trust statute allow, allows a broad range of 
you know, interested people to bring a petition in court and hold the trustee accountable for their actions. Normally, you know, the people who are allowed to do that are basically the beneficiaries, the people who have some interest in the trust. But with a pet trust, it could be any um, charitable organization that that's mission is to take care of animals. Um, and it could it's a broad range of people who can just come to the court and say, hey, I'm worried about this animal or I'm worried that this trustee isn't spending the money correctly on this animal. So that's a makes the pet trust different from other trusts. Yeah. Anytime you have to be beholden to PETA, you know, that that would inspire you to fly straight in that yeah. regard. Yeah, it might be hard to get their attention if we're just talking about a koi fish, but yeah. <laughs> but that's an important point. Um, okay, I'm going to just scroll all the way down one more time and make sure I didn't overlook anybody. Um, Madison, any final words about planning for your pets? Yeah, I think you should certainly take, everyone should take a look at what pets they have. I mean, I obviously am not too worried about planning for my pets right now. I'm pretty sure I'm going to outlive them, but I'm pretty sure I'm never going to be without a pet. So I, that's something that I have to plan for, but it can be so much as researching rescues in your area. Like I've heard of rescues that will just take your animal. Like there are plenty of rescues if you have a horse that just put your horse at the pasture and take care of them. It's not like they just immediately adopt it out to a private citizen. It's like, you know, an old folks home for pets. Mm -hmm. And they, there are people and it for other breeds, right. other yeah. species mm -hmm. too, you know, cats, dogs, but you have to decide what you want. You have to look at uh, if you have multiple pets, do you want them to uh, you know, all have they to stay matter. together or is there a good break? Like we were talking about your cats, there's a good break that, you know, no one's going to be heartbroken if you split them a certain way. So those are things that everybody should consider. We suggest people with children and special needs children to write letters about how their children are. It would be a good idea to have some sort of information about your animal, whether it be an ongoing medical condition a personality trait or disorder, depending on what type of animal you have, <laughs> um, you know, things like that, you know, so that your trustee has a good place to start if you're, you know, not giving direct instructions in that regard. But I mean, it would help them rehome. You know, the, the whole goal is to make things as easy as possible on your trustee, I think. Right. Yeah. I, I do like that, that idea of leaving behind a, a side letter, you know, that, just talks about the peculiarities of your pets. And yeah. We each have a pet that we would say, don't let them free eat. <laughs> right. Don't, don't leave the bowl of food out for them 24 seven. Or if there's multiples, you got to feed them separate. You you know? feed them separate yeah. yeah. Or there's going to be a health issue or, you know, whatever the case may be. This one likes this toy. It's got emotional support stuffy, you know, some, you know, little things like that, that we take, we, you know, we know about our pets, but we don't always share it. Right. Right. Although you and I do. Well, yeah. <laughs> we know too much, probably. I don't know um, talking about work. <laughs> yeah, that's more fun than talking about work. Um, all right. Well, thanks, Madison. And thank you all for joining us. Um, I hope you maybe learned something and had a little bit of fun today. Um, we look forward to connecting with you next time. Thank you for joining us today for another episode of Absolute Trust Talk Live. If you enjoyed listening in, then don't forget to subscribe. You can find us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you may listen by searching Absolute Trust Talk. While you're there, we would also love for you to leave us a review. And then why not share your favorite episodes with family, friends, or colleagues too? You can find all of our shows and corresponding show notes by visiting AbsoluteTrustCouncil.com. You'll also find a variety of other free resources including our eBooks, videos, blogs, presentations, and more. If you need help with your estate planning or administration, we also offer a free discovery call to help get the process started. You can find more information on booking your session by visiting absolutetrustcouncil.com slash scheduling. Don't forget to keep an eye out for our next live episode in two weeks. If you join us for the broadcast, you can submit questions during the show, but if not, don't worry. 
You can always get in touch with us by sending a quick message to info at absolutetrustcouncil.com. Thanks again for listening. We'll see you soon.